Today we're cranking infill from 10% to 100% like my caffeine level right before deadline. Which cubes will survive our stress test and which ones will tap out? Loser buys the filament. Wait, can filament buy filament? I'm Brian Luke, and this is Maker Build It, and today we printed nine identical one inch cubes. Same printer, same PLA, the only difference is the percent of infill. We're gonna try to poke a hole in each one with our force meter, because science. And this is my emotional support cube with 100% infill. It will not be tested. And we're trying to make the boring part unboring. These are our constants. Feel free to roast me in the comments, but I just want you to see exactly how we printed each cube. We lock those down so the infill can embarrass itself fairly. We're also gonna look at the metrics per cube, including filament in grams and the amount of time it took to actually print the cube. Then we'll figure out how much newtons of force it takes to puncture a hole in each one. We're using rectilinear infill, and the way I look at infill is a sort of like pizza topping. Some people like it at 20%, and that's how they could take it all day. And some go to 90%, and they'll judge you if you don't use gyroid. So we're going to use our force meter and this probe to see how far we could puncture into each cube. And we're going to measure the force in newtons. As you can see, with 10% infill, there is quite a lot of space. If we look at 90, it almost looks solid. So we're going to start with the 10% infill. Oh, you can already hear it cracking. <laughs> it's stuck on the... We're going to have to take it off. And as you can see, our probe went right into the 10% infill. I don't know if you could hear a crack, but it was cracking. Let's see if we get this probe out. As we can see on the 10% infill, it pretty much went all the way to the bottom. Let's test out the 20% infill. Okay, maxed out, so let's pull it back out. So this is the 20%, and as you can see, it went in pretty far. Okay, 30%. Same thing. It probably would have kept probably would have cracked if I kept pushing it through because it was pretty much going in okay 40 percent whoa okay okay at 40 percent it made a decent little divot but nothing too crazy. I'm guessing anything above 50% is not going to make a huge difference. Okay, so we see it poked a hole in the 50%. Barely did any damage. I'm guessing anything over that, just based on the way the grid looks in these, it's not really going to do any damage. Let's see, 70. Same thing, little tiny dot. I'm guessing 80 and 90 are going to be the same thing. Wow. 
I mean, okay, I'm going to show you the difference between 10 and 90. You can see the holes get progressively smaller the denser the infill, which is sort of what we expected, but it really looks like anything over 50 probably doesn't make a huge difference. Here's what the data says. The print climbs linear at first. Every 10% infill adds about 34 to 52 seconds per step up to 50%. Then 1 minute 28 seconds to 1 minute 35 seconds per step from 60 to 90%. Filament use is almost perfectly linear, about 1.67 grams per 10% infill on average. From 10 to 90%, you use 3.14 times the amount of filament, about a 214% increase. Overall print time goes from 11 minutes and 28 seconds to 20 minutes and 41 seconds, about an 80% increase. Filament goes from 6.22 grams to 19.54 grams. The infill maxes out my meter at about the 50% mark, around 500 newtons. To give you an idea, the average man's grip strength is between about 400 and 500 newtons. So if the strength gain starts to plateau, the smart money zone is between 40 and 50 percent. Solid gains before the time and cost curve gets pricey. After that, we don't see a big amount of damage that the probe did to the cubes. But remember, geometry, the walls, the top and bottom layer also play a factor into the strength of your actual 3D printed part. So what percent infill should you use? For cosmetics and light duty, use a 10 to 25% infill. It will save filament, save time, and save your weekend. General and functional parts should probably use about 30 to 50%. For things you may want to abuse or have a lot of stiffness to, you may want to use about 60 to 80%. Try thicker walls first, as well as even a different geometry. 90% total overkill. I would even argue 70 to 80% is pretty much overkill. If this saved you some filament or an argument about how much infill you should use, it would be awesome if you hit the like button. Comment with your favorite printer and how much infill you use. And if enough of you say gyroid, I'll do that pattern next. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It. And remember, Keep on making. I need my emotional support cube.